hello everyone my name is sandra and i am presenting on medicine tools hello everyone my name is sandra and i am presenting on medicine tools behalf um we are going to be i mean be taking you through three uh, three cases uh, first is mrs x a 48 year old lady from sholingar who ate food from a hotel and presented with uh, non bilious non uh, blood stained uh, uh, five to six episodes of vomiting for two days uh large volume watery stools uh 10 to 15 uh 10 to 15 uh episodes that were non blood stained and non non mucoid and mucoid and fever for one day uh she is a known diabetic for the past 5 years her vitals she was uh, afebrile with a uh, pulse uh, pulse rate of 100 beats per minute uh blood pressure of 90 by 60 mm of mercury and uh, respiratory rate of 22 deaths per minute her general examination was normal uh, per abdomen her abdomen was soft non tender with no organomegaly and all other systems were normal next in case number 2 we have a 31 year old uh, woman who presented with loose stools for 5 days fever for 3 days and vomiting for 2 days uh, she has no comorbidities uh, her she is vitally stable her general examination was normal she only had some tenderness in her uh, right iliac fossa and all other systems were normal and next we have uh, case number 3 uh, where there is a 42 year old uh, lady who presented with uh, vomiting for one day 5 days ago uh, loose stools for one day and fever with chills for one day uh, she was also white uh, her uh, pulse rate was 110 beats per minute her blood pressure was 120 by 80 and her respiratory rate was 16 breaths per minute her general examination was normal she had uh, some uh, she had a soft uh, she, she had a soft abdomen with mild epigastric tenderness and all other systems were normal um now i would like to ask you for your differentials okay uh thank you for your answers um as uh you said our different the differentials we considered were predominantly on uh, acute gastroenteritis which can either be viral bacterial or parasitic so viral could have uh, could have been enterovirus adenovirus uh, rotavirus or novak virus bacterial being uh, salmonella or shigella vibrio yersinia campylobacter and uh, parasitic being amebiasis or uh, giardiasis <coughs> so investigations that were done in case number 1 uh uh st uh stool culture uh came positive for uh, salmonella typhi in case number in case number 2 uh the blood culture came positive for uh, salmonella typhi and uh the uh, viral test was strongly suggestive of uh, typhoid and in case number 3 the stool culture came uh, uh came positive for uh, non typhoidal salmonella uh now uh, considering these cases i would like to discuss a bit about uh, enteric fever versus non typhoidal uh, salmonellosis and this is mostly because even though they are both genetically quite uh, similar 
they elicit very different uh, clinical presentations and elicit very different immune responses in uh, humans. Uh, so uh, epi the epidemiology of Salmonella typh typhi, it's an invasive life-threatening uh, systemic illness with a global uh, burden of more than 27 million cases and more than 200,000 deaths. Uh, it is predominantly seen in the developing world, largely due to a lack of clean water and sanitation and can be transmitted feco-orally. Uh, the epidemiology of non-typhoidal salmonellosis, it occurs worldwide, uh, but mortality is predominantly restricted to the developing world. It can be transmitted uh, via contaminated uh, food products. And in only 5% of cases of non-typhoidal salmonellosis, there can be invasive ex extra intestinal disease due to bacteremia. Uh, now I'd like to discuss a few of the uh, pathogenic uh, differentiating features between both. So in uh, typhoidal uh, serovirus, uh, they have uh, several inactivated or degraded uh, genes. So they do not have uh, any, any way of uh, performing chemotaxis or adhesins or, uh, uh, or anaerobic metabolism through the uh, VI antigen, while uh, non-typhoidal uh, salmonella can. And uh, while uh, and uh, in salmonella typhi, there are, which expresses the VI capsule, it reduces the toll-like receptor dependent uh, interleukin-8 production in the, intestinal, in the intestinal mucosa. So because the uh, non-typhoidal salmonella serovirus um, are evolved to use inflammation-derived metabolites, they're more likely to cause a localized infection, uh, whereas in uh, typhoidal serovirus, they're more likely to cause a systemic infection. Um, clinical manifestations, uh, the differences between the clinical manifestations. In Salmonella typhi, the incubation period is about 14 days and symptoms can persist up to three weeks. And uh, it shows a characteristic step ladder pattern and uh, other uh, frequent symptoms can include chills, abdominal pain, nausea, diarrhea, and dry cough. And signs can include uh, rose spots uh, up on the abdomen and trunk along with hepatosplenomegaly. Non-typhoidal salmonella has an incubation period of about 6 to 12 hours and uh, symptoms can persist up to 10 days. It's often self-limiting, uh, causing acute gastroenteritis and watery diarrhea. And once more, only 5% lead to uh, diarrhea or uh, invasive uh, non-typhoidal salmonellosis. So diagnosis in salmonella uh, typhi is via uh, blood culture, serology, which is a vital test. Uh, stool culture and urine culture, whereas in uh, non-typhoidal salmon. salmonella, it is largely by supportive therapy and antibiotics are not used unless it is uh, a complicated uh, case. <coughs> uh, vaccination for salmonella typhi is, uh, there are three types. It can be a killed whole cell parenteral vaccine, a live attenuated oral vaccine, or a VI polysaccharide capsule-based vaccine. And as of right now, there are no vaccines available for non-typhoidal salmonella. So what happened to our patients? In case number one, uh, the patient was treated with uh, azithromycin for uh, one gram, for one gram azithromycin for seven days. In case number two, uh, injection ceftriaxone was followed by uh, cotrimoxazole 960 mgBD for seven days. And in case three, injection ceftriaxone was followed by uh, Cotrimoxazole 960 BD for seven days, but the stool cultures persi were persistently uh, positive. So uh, she was then started on uh, azithromycin one gram OD for seven days. 
and HICC was informed to check if there were similar outbreaks in the area in order to find a possible uh, connection among these cases. Um, and uh, learning points uh, from these three cases is that uh, Salmonella typhi uh, frequently presents as bacteremia and can cause complicated infections, whereas uh, non-typhoidal salmonellosis uh, is most often presents as a localized self-limiting uh, infection. Only 5% of cases are uh, invasive uh, NTS, and antibiotics are not required for such cases unless it is a complicated case. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Any comments or questions from the audience? Joint last, but uh, uh, both all three cases are non for salmonella, is it? You presented uh, or they were entry fever? Ma'am, uh, ma'am, the case number one was salmonella typhi, and so was case number two. Case number three alone was non typhoidal salmonella. Typhi medium, yes. Yes, sir. yes. So the first and the third case, we could actually stop the antibiotics. Yes. So continue it for seven days. Any other question? Actually, non typhoid salmonella are more sensitive to quinolones rather than azithromycin. So the drug of first choice should be azithromycin. And uh, why did you suspect an outbreak? Because they actually don't occur in outbreaks. Um, Ma'am, the cases came in a bed, came within uh, a few days of each other. So thank you, Sandra. So uh, all the presentations are over. So thank you to the speakers for sticking to time and uh, really appreciate Sandra and Akhil for their presentations. So the best presentation for clinical approach, novelty and uh, lucidity of the presentation goes to Akhil. Thank you. Thank you.